yo yo it's freaking robo it's a, it's a bit of a cringy intro but it's what we started the the channel with so we're gonna freaking keep it boys we freaking hit one thousand followers one thousand like what i mean i know right now we've just hit 1250 this video was intended to go out at 1000 so that's what this video is about but we're at 1250 it's crazy and i want to give a huge freaking thanks to every single person that stopped by the stream all the mods that helped um, all the support i've got from irl other streamers the collabs everything it's been insane the words really can't describe how i felt since i hit it um like i was it was just so surreal when i hit it and i loved it i had i had this plan right i had a plan so when we hit 1000 followers which i mean we've hit now so this is this is us starting my plan now um, my plan was to share my story share kind of my life story give a little bit more about myself because i have never really done that on on stream like we talk here and there about different things but never done a full kind of this is my life this is who i am kind of thing and i want to start start a series start a kind of um a youtube series on mental health awareness and support i know there's a lot of awareness out there right but i want to give my my personal kind of story my take on it things that I've used that have helped me in the past and I want to share other people's stories and how they've coped just to kind of help people with you're not alone other people go through stuff as well and this is how they've gotten through it you can get through it as well whether these help you or not don't know but yeah so it's got this video is going to be a bit about me and who I am so you guys get to know more about me and then the end bit's going to be a little bit about my streaming journey how that has affected me and helped me um and then a, the announcement and the description of what the future videos um on this channel are going to be not all the videos just like this series if you get me um I want to preface this video as just a little warning to you guys that it is going to get a little bit dark it's going to show my let me it's going to talk about my darkest moments in life, but um, stick around though, because talking about how streaming has helped me in my journey back to being able to smile and have fun and everything is, in my opinion, it's it's something that um, I really want to share with you guys. And I want you guys to hear that, you know, things do get better. They can get better. All right, so I grew up as a normal kid. I mean, relatively normal. Look at me, duh. <laughs> I had a loving family, a good home. Couldn't really ask for anything else. Looking back, when I started going to school, daycare, all that kind of stuff, it, it became obvious that something was wrong with just the way that I interact with people. I struggled with lots of things that, and this was kind of the start really to discovering who I am, my anxiety, and to this day, I'm I'm so grateful for how quickly we caught on to certain things because I wouldn't be the person I am today without all that time to prepare myself and learn coping things and all that kind of stuff. The first time it really showed up, like before, you know, childhood, you just kind of go, yeah, you know, it's just a kid, whatever. But the first day of school, I was kicking and screaming. I would not leave my mum's side. And things like that just started occurring more and more. I wouldn't see people. I wouldn't leave the house. And for me, I, I, I remember, like, the, some of those moments. It was just normal. I just didn't want to do those things. They were scary, whatever. Didn't really personally feel like anything was wrong until I started struggling to, to communicate with other kids. Like, I couldn't really... I struggled to make friends. I struggled to talk to people. I was just too nervous. I just let other people walk over me. They said what they want. And I'd chip in rarely just because I didn't want to make people... Or I didn't want people to think badly of me, if that makes it. After a few years, um, we finally got a psychologist. They gave us a second opinion. And they and she diagnosed me with separa uh, separation anxiety that didn't get resolved. For those who don't know what separation anxiety is, something you have when you're a baby. You know, baby starts crying when the mother leaves the room. I still had that. I technically still do. I've gotten used to it, and I'm much better with it now. Despite all that, due to amazing family support and love, I still grew up as a normal kid, had a normal childhood. I love primary school. I remember through all high school, I still wish that I could go back to primary school for no reason other than I enjoyed it. I love my teachers. I love my friends. I just enjoyed my life. And bang, we're in high school. I'm trying to go as quick as I can because there is a lot to cover um, in this video and I don't want it to take too long. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, on the first year of high school, um, due to really high stress of moving to a new school um, and my anxiety, um, I my genetic alopecia was triggered it's um so most it's normally genetic but it can sometimes just occur randomly just like everything can for those who don't know alopecia is a genetic condition in which the white blood cells in your body think that your hair cells your hair stem cells so the where everything grows from think it's an illness so your white blood cells try and protect you obviously and they start attacking your hair 
SLs, which can lead to different stages, different types. Um, most people just get thinning of the hair. So, you know, you just got less, slightly less hair than everyone else. Doesn't really have an issue. Some people only lose hair from certain areas. I know people that have lost all their head hair, but their arms and legs are fine. Um, I personally, I have the full version of alopecia. So no hair whatsoever. But that's just a little bit of an explanation for those who don't know what it is. Cause I know lots of people drop by the stream all the time and they're like, why don't you have no hair? All that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that is an explanation for those who don't know. Most of you who do stick around the stream most of the time, you do know what that is. Unfortunately, as high school kids can be, they're a bit cruel. I mean, I was year seven, so 12 year old kid, no hair. I looked a bit funny. I was very nerdy. And so kids can be cruel. Things happen. But because of my social anxiety, it made it difficult during those starting years to make friends. And generally, year seven was probably one of my roughest years. I had just lost my, all my hair, starting year school, anxiety at all, all time high. But um, throughout that year, I did make manage to make a few friends that are still with me to this day. People um, who just stop by regularly will know Wisp of an Angel, one of my mods, one of my all-time greatest friends, and I made made that friend in year seven. Um, being a quiet kid, I sat up the front in class, as you do, nerdy kid, or you don't know anyone. You sit up the front that way. And if you focus on school, nothing else matters. Um, but through the year, I eventually I connected with one of the other guys that was sitting there. We talked about games and all that kind of stuff. And then through connecting with him, I managed to connect with his other friends he'd made up in that class. Um, and these friends are now my, my strongest connections and my strongest friends IRL. But these friends and making these connections made me feel more confident, more safe in the new environment. And it slowly helped me get used to the new school, which honestly ended up making high school favorite part of my life. Getting towards the end of the first year, I got tonsillitis. Everyone gets tonsillitis. This is a thing that happens. But I had it constantly. I had three months straight of tonsillitis, which is uncommon and shouldn't happen. So I got my tonsils removed. I was very happy to have them removed because now I can be better. But after I got them taken out, something else happened. So maybe like a month, two months later, well, like he's still really tired like you get you get really tired after you first get them out you're tired for a little bit but i was still really tired for a long time turns out i had glandular fever i was diagnosed with it a little bit later by a doctor and there's a lot of different side effects you can have with that but the main one i had was just exhaustion i was just tired a lot sleeping a lot couldn't be bothered doing anything and then it evolved there you go there's a word uh it evolved into chronic fatigue um, over the next two years, I slept anywhere from 14 hours a day to 22 hours a day. There was a week where I slept 22 hours a day every single day for an entire week, right? You know how ridiculous that is? I was awake for 14 hours total for an entire week. That's crazy. This also meant that my brain wasn't functioning correct correctly, so I needed to be reminded to eat food, go to the toilet, to have a shower. I really was just a husk of a person. I just frankly didn't exist and that that led me into my depression and some of the struggles that have stuck with me to to this day but also define me as not define me as a person but make me the person I am and keep me strong in other areas of my life so we're gonna skip some time now so that I don't like I said spend like I don't want a half an hour video on <laughs> on on this um but after eventually getting cleared of chronic fatigue, um, I slowly got back on my feet, you know? I started to live life again, seeing friends. Um, it was kind of cool to go back and everyone was excited to see me, which I didn't, with depression, I didn't think people would be excited to see me. Um, I felt like a normal kid again. I got my social life back. I made some more amazing close friendships. Um, and still to this day, I look back at my final years of high school, year 10, 11, and 12, as my favorite years of my life. Nothing can beat good friends um, and school is the best time for meeting them. So I know, I know I remember going all through, well, like early high school going, oh, I just can't wait till school's finished. Now I'm going, I want to go back to school. That was fun. I mean, obviously the stress of like tests and stuff is like, oh, but still best time ever. All right, it's time to get sad. Don't worry, the payoff in the other end completely worth it i'm actually really excited to talk about it because i'm um, not the sad bit but after the after bit the getting better bit because it has just changed my life for better than before i got perfectly bad a year after high school i got really close to this girl right and i fell in love i still call it love 
Um, years, years later, I still consider it. It was my first time falling in love. It was beautiful and amazing and everything, everything I could have dreamed from. And we had an amazing relationship. One day out of the blue, we were just done. Um, no explanations or reason I could see. And honestly, my world broke. She was my anchor. She was my everything. Um, relationship gone and the friendship gone too. We had, um, we had planned a deb. For those Americans out there, you guys call it a prom. We call it a deb. The following weeks after that, I was just, I was, I wasn't me. I didn't speak. I didn't leave my bed. I didn't eat. And then I watched as she went and she did our deb with someone else. I pulled out of the deb because I couldn't handle it. She went and did it. I was lost. I mean, I, I was lost. And I fell into some, some dark depths that should never really be felt by anyone. Ever. I don't want anyone to ever feel that way. For the following two months, I was considered no longer capable to drive. I was considered unsafe on the road. Um, so I wasn't allowed to drive. I couldn't interact with people. I was just too out of it to, I wasn't me. I, I also was no longer able to work. I just couldn't interact with people. So I work at a grocery store where I'm up the front talking to people. That's my job. So if I can't talk to people, yeah. Um, and I lost about 15 kilos. Given that at the time I was about 65 kilos, I dropped to 50 kilos and that's not good. That is unhealthy. I was pale and skinny and not getting any better. Unfortunately, due to all this, I did turn to self-harm and I became very suicidal. Um, which for anyone, and I, I want to stress this point, right? I want to stress this point. For anyone currently going through anything like that, feeling like self-harm or suicide or just, just depression in general, feeling down, anxiety, get some help. Talk to someone. Reach out. Because you don't... I, I, I know that when you're depressed, you think nothing can make you feel better. Nothing. And I still get that. I still have depression. But you won't know unless you've tried. Right? And if you try and you get nothing from it, then you've tried. Right? And then you can try something different. You can keep trying different things until you find something that makes you smile. That makes you want to get up in the morning. But following on from this, worried about me, my family took me to emergency psychologists. One after another. Looked at lots of different ones. Had me assessed for mental hospitals. And I always had someone with me. I was under surveillance. Although looking, at, looking back on this time for me now... Um, although it was the worst time of my life, I was struggling. Also, the most I've been looked after in my life. My appreciation goes beyond words, beyond, like, I, I'll never be able to thank them enough. For the support that was shown, um, even though I couldn't see at the time, I had IRN, IRL friends over with me for 24 hours of every single day and night. Over 20 to 30 friends made sure that I had someone with me at all times. I would just make sure I wasn't alone. Even people who I hadn't spoken to for a couple of years who heard that I was struggling so much just messaged me. I was like, hey, do you need someone to hang out with? Do you need, do you just need someone to hang out in the house? Like, obviously I couldn't interact that well. So I had people come over and they sat down and they just do what they do at home. They draw or play Fortnite or whatever. And I would do what I would do. It was just that having someone, that company. And looking back, I know that I wouldn't still be here without them. And I am beyond, beyond thankful and lucky for, the, for that support. It's crazy. And I like, yeah, I just, I don't know what to say. That's to some, some of those people are going to see this. Some of those people are going to see this video. And I want you to know that you know who you are. Um, I wouldn't be here without you. And so over the next few months, I put on some weight. Thanks to friends making sure I was eating. And I started to look like a human again. I could actually talk to people for small periods of time. Life was hard, but I was sick of letting depression control me. It took too much of my life for me, too much time, too many, like, too many connections that I could have made, too much progression in my career or whatever I wanted to do. It took too much time and I was, I was done with it. I needed to stop letting it control me. All right, now, now it's time for the good bit. We've, we've had some sad, some sadness, right? We've had some sadness, but it's time the bit where we all smile and we feel happy, right? In September of, in September of 2018, I decided that I might try a live stream. Just something to do. I was sick of being unproductive, couldn't work, I couldn't go anywhere. I wanted to do something with my life. I tried once before to stream, like three years prior. I'd done like a total of three streams. Never really worked for me. It was just something funny to do with a mate so he could watch while I played. 
Um, so I don't really count that as my start of streaming, like the, the three years ago. I, I considered September when I started streaming. But it was something that I enjoyed watching. I enjoyed watching other streams I have for so long, back since Justin TV days. And I felt like it might be something that I want to try myself. Just something to do, like feel like I'm actually, you know, putting something out there into the world. Um, the first week of streaming was just shits and giggles. I mean, I, I was just having fun with my mate Flaming Angel. At the time, I didn't really care who watched. I, I mean, if I had zero viewers, I don't care. I'm having fun with a mate. I'm just doing it. I'm doing it for fun, right? I don't plan on it going anywhere. Didn't re like, you know, who who cares? If I do it for two weeks and then I just go, ah, eh, whatever. I can go and like, it was just something to do while I was at home. And I mean, honestly, I was just hoping that it might give me a chance to connect with more gamers, you know? Whether it allowed me to, if one person dropped in and then I made a friend that I could play games with, that was more than. I could hope for like that. I really just wanted to be able to connect with people. And then the fateful day, the fateful day, I don't know the date, which is makes me sad, but the fateful day that big time Rob, the absolute legend rated me. Now, I can't remember how many he rated. I think it was between 20 and 30 um, viewers. Right. But I mean, I'm sure as any, anyone who's tried streaming before knows a 20 man raid or when you're at zero viewers, is such a boost to your morale it's like they picked me i was picked why um just like i was feeling, I, I was feeling that I'm, I'm not that good i don't know what i'm like i don't know what i'm doing half the time i'm just having some fun with a mate right and i got so nervous i didn't know what to do but everyone was so supportive that it it really it made like i've got written here as a dot point made me smile for the first time this raid allowed me to smile, which I hadn't been able to do for a really long time. I finished that, sh that stream and I went out to my, like my mom was out, out in the lounge and I smiled and she, she was like, in a kind of, in a positive way. And yeah, I, I freaking, I got to smile. Like Rob, you, you're probably going to watch this cause I'm going to send it to you. You made me smile for probably one of the first times after all that shit went down. And I want to thank you because that has also kickstarted this entire journey on Twitch, now YouTube, and all my socials. I wouldn't be doing this without that raid. I probably would have quit a couple of weeks later because it was just something to do to be productive. Now it's something that is my dream. That raid kickstarted what is like after that, I went, yes, this is fun. This could be something I could do. It's a dream. Let's make it happen. Let's start working towards it, right? And you made that happen, Rob. Your viewers, anyone from Big Time Rob's channel, you guys are what have encouraged me to be here today. All right, so the next day, day after the raid, I followed Rob as soon as the stream finished and I set up alerts. Set up, yeah, notifications. That's the word for them. And I got a notification, Rob was live. So I went, you know what? Let's go and watch him. I just want, all I wanted to do was I wanted to say thanks. I joined his stream and I was like, thank you so much, that raid. Like, you don't understand what, it, what it's done for me. Like, he didn't really understand at the time. I think this video might help him understand what he did. Um, and he was like, yeah, no problem. No problem, dude. And he's like, do you want to play some games? I was like, dude, yeah, I do. Let's play some games. So I logged on because we both streamed the same game and we played some zombies. Right? And I loved it. I had so much fun, right? I was smiling. I was laughing, dude. I was laughing. That, that is something I could never dreamed of doing for over a year and a half. I didn't think I'd be able to laugh again. After this, I began streaming every day. Rob streamed every day. So why not just join him? I'm not doing anything with my time. Let's join Rob stream every day and have some fun. So I started doing it. Streaming every day, taking it seriously, it made me happy. And it made me feel like I could get better. I could get somewhere. I could do something with my life. If I could do this, Somewhere down the track, I might be able to, like, at that stage, I didn't even consider how far we've gotten now. But at that stage, I was like, if I can do this one day, I might be able to, you know, go back and get a proper job, go back to, s to school as in, like, uni, get a degree. I can do something with my life. And ever since this day, I've constantly been looking at ways to increase the quality of my stream and make new friends. Um, over this one week, the, the week I started streaming, the next week, over that one week, Rob and the amazing Big Time Army came through and got us to 200 followers in one week after meeting. That is insane. And that boosted my confidence on this platform and maybe want to try harder, do things to upgrade my system, 
Um, this bad boy up here wouldn't have been able to even consider doing that without the mass without the massive support from streaming. Like without all the love and making me feel I could do something. Oh, I did this. I learned how to build a computer from scratch because I can do things because you guys made me believe I could. And so here we are. 10 months later, it is 11 months later now because I'm super late with releasing this video. Somehow we hit 1,000 followers. 1,250 followers, actually. Um, so we hit 1K followers on the 29th of June. Um, we had an insane stream that day. I remember that. Followed by a shout out from a beautiful dude called Earlswood. For those of you who don't know Earlswood, I will put his link underneath the stream. He is an absolutely amazing streamer and very supportive. Um, he gives away free streaming stuff like um, transitions and emotes and everything like that. And we've talked um, and I messaged him on his stream and I was just like, hey, dude, I just had an awesome stream. He's like, awesome. And I mentioned um, that I was, I think, three followers at the time away from 1,000. And he's like, dude, really? And he shouted me out multiple times in his stream to get me there. Like, after I finished stream, I was like, we are so close. That's awesome. I'm going to hit it tomorrow. Earlswood is like, no, you're going to hit it today. It's going to happen. And then we did. I can't believe it. <laughs> Streaming has been an amazing journey. Something that started out as something that I wanted to do just to keep me busy has now turned into one of the main enjoyments of my life. Um, my dream job um, and has given me a large group of amazing friends, streamers, artists, just amazing people in general that I will hopefully be friends with for life. I'm so, so happy that all that time ago I decided to start streaming. Um, and I will never forget all the people that have helped bring me to this point. Like I mentioned, the artists, the viewers, the other streamers I collab with, the streamers that have given me advice, and not to forget my amazing mods. I've actually put up a little thing. We've got their beautiful names and it's like that. There we go. So yeah, Big Time Rob, Flaming Angel, Whisper of an Angel, because we've got two angels, Z1620, Gold Miner, and Earlswood. We've had um, a few temporary mods in that as well, but these are the main mods and main supports of my channel and of me as a person and each one of these deserves so so much love i would not still be streaming without you guys you're all legends also need to give a shout out to all the amazing streamers i've collabed with um i won't be able to name them all because there's been quite a few but i'll put there'll be lots of links in the description with the description of who they are and what they've done um but like a few big examples big time rob z1620 um the Flaming Angel, obviously, um, and there's a bunch of others that I just can't, can't name because there's been quite a few. But those are the three main ones. Those, those guys, absolute legends. Um, go and check them out if you haven't. But um, yeah, I had a rough life, especially the past few years. But thanks to the joy that streaming for you guys has brought me, the friends that I've made, and the increase in confidence that um, just streaming has given me in general, I can, I can drive again. I can drive a car again. If I want food, I can drive to the shops. I couldn't do that for a year and a half. I'm back to my normal self. I mean, I'm still, I'm still pale. <laughs> I'm still white, but I, I put my weight back on again. I mean, a bit too much for my liking, but I put weight on again. I'm not like skinny and bony. I'm confident enough to push through my anxiety for different things. I can go see my friends. I can go to the movies. I can be able to live my life. And without streaming and the journey through that, I wouldn't be able to. So really, where I am now is thanks to you. And look, obviously life has its down moments. I still have nights where I go back to those dark thoughts. They haven't disappeared. But the amazing psychologists... Um, with the meds they prescribed me, the IRL support, the amazing streaming support has honestly changed that so much. It's not a 24-7 dark moment. It's, my life isn't a dark moment. It's a light, happy moment my entire life with some dark spots in it. It's here and there. Um, and I will never be able to thank anyone enough for the support, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing it as much as I can. I want to... You know, I want to give back. I want to give back, right? Um, so we're going to... This is, I announced this sort of the start of the video. We're going to start a series. And I know I've said that lots of times on this YouTube channel, but now I'm taking it more serious. 
we're going to start a series where we talk about difficult stories, kind of like the one that I've just given you. Talk about um, coping mechanisms, what they did and where they are now. Because um, I want to I want to start a series where, because you've got people that um, do series about you know, issues. Um, you've got people who offer advice, but they're mostly general advice. Just general blanket advice. So I want to start a series where you see specific stories with specific circumstances that people have gotten over. Because when you're in that state, you go, yes, these things work for other people, but I'm different. So I want you to know that everyone's story is different, but you can still get through it. So um, we're going to start a series where we're going to invite people. We're going to do like little Discord calls and we're going to talk to them about their life about their struggles and what they have done to get over those struggles. Um, I didn't really talk too much about my own coping mechanisms in here. Whether I'd, if people want to see that, I do a future video to do with how I like the probably hundreds of different coping me mechanisms I have for um, anxiety and depression and what I do in those states when I start getting low nowadays. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to start a series and people are going to come on. I've got a few ideas for different people. If you yourself have a story that you've struggled, but, you know, you're so much better than you used to be, come and let me know. Talk to me. And I, I would love for people to be able to see different stories and know that everything will be okay. I love you guys. And this journey has been amazing. I want to keep the journey going for as long as we can. My life and streaming is kind of linked now. Like... And just kind of a, my, my love for life has increased with just my journey through Twitch, meeting new people. And that's never going to change. You know, it doesn't matter what happens on Twitch from now on. I mean, obviously it does to me, but like the friendships and connections I've made, I will keep and will continue to grow as a person with them. Um, so if you're struggling and you feel alone, no, you're not. You can get out of that dark pit if I can. My Discord is always open if you need to talk to me about anything. Please reach out, like I said earlier in this video, because you never know the support that can be returned in kind. When I message my first... When I message one friend saying, I need some support, I need someone here, it returns so much more in kind. It can happen for you as well. You never know what, re what return you'll get. Keep your hopes up, hold your head high, and know that one day you may be able to beat depression and anxiety too. You are all awesome. This journey has been insane, and I hope, hope it still continues to grow further. Keep being awesome, guys. I love all of you. But um, until then, Robo out.